Well, let me welcome you. My name is Mark Ray. I'm Vice President of Community Development at Gray School of Theology. I'm also the Executive Director of the Gray Center for Spiritual Development. And I have a question for you before we start this interview. My question is this, why don't more people study the Bible in depth? Why don't more people study the scriptures beyond just reading? Scriptures tell us to study. They tell us to meditate. Why don't more people do that? Here to help us answer that question is my good friend, Dr. Mark the Dean Haywood. He is the provost of Gray School of Theology. He's an author, he's an educator, he's a pastor. And he's also the teacher in our basic ministry course. It is a certificate course offered through Gray Center for Spiritual Development. He is the one that teaches basic Bible study. You teach this at through Grace Center for Spiritual Development in our basic ministry course, but you also teach this through Grace School of Theology. Dr. Haywood, welcome. Glad to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be back, Mark, always. So <clears throat> you're te you teach the basics of Bible study. You teach it both at Grace School of Theology. You also teach it through our basic ministry as one of the modules through our basic ministry course at Grace Center for Spiritual Development. Why That's is right. this such an important thing to teach that you would teach it both in the degreed side and the non-degreed side? Why is this so important? Well, it's so important because it affects all of the classes that you take um, beyond this point. It's really what I would call a foundational course. It's one of our core courses uh, in both um, the uh, basics um, uh, presentation as well as in the on the academic side because it's a core course. Every other both uh, Bible exposition or theological class will be impacted by your ability to study the Bible or your ability to interpret scripture. And so it's, it's, a, it's a foundational course. So talk to me just a little bit. There is a difference, obviously, between the accredited academic Bible study methods course and the, the course that you teach through basic ministry in the basics of Bible study. Talk just a little bit about the differences between the two. Obviously, one's accredited and one's not, but, but yeah, beyond that. Sure, but, but basically the only difference, Mark, um, really is uh, the fact that on the accredited side, you have uh, exams, you know, and you have papers and what have you on the accredited side. On the non-degreed side, you get the same information as I teach in the classroom, I just don't uh, require you to take an exam or to write a paper, <laughs> but you, uh, you know, um, in both areas, you have to take notes in both areas. You have to absorb the material. Uh, I encourage people on both sides of the fence, fence to ask questions, uh, but the content really is the same. The, the, there is a, the difference, I guess, would be the, um, uh, the intensity or the rigor, if you might call it, on the right, academic right. side. But the, but the content or the concepts that we teach are the same. In basic ministry, which is the non-degreed full-blown course, it's 18 hours of training. You teach, it's six different modules. You teach the first module, which obviously puts a, a level of importance to that. You're the first module up. You're the first one that's taught because we feel very strongly, as you've said, if you don't know how to study the Bible, <clears throat> Everything else be kind of kind of can become secondary. You really yeah, don't. Absolutely. You can't get your grasp around it if you're not studying the scriptures in which God's revealed. Christ is revealed. The Spirit is revealed. Right. So give me one. As you have taught basic Bible study, give me one standout thing about Bible study. If you could, if you could leave a student with one thing, what would be the one thing about Bible study that you'd want to teach them? I, I would say that. Um... Most people have learned uh, scripture piecemeal, uh, and that is a scripture here and a scripture there. And I can remember, Mark, the very first scripture that I ever recited um, at church, you know, but nobody, even though I memorized that scripture, nobody taught me the connectivity of that scripture to the rest of the 66 books and verses in the Bible, okay? And so one of the important things is first to see the Bible as a big puzzle. And that all of the verses, if you will, uh, all of the, the verses are uh, pieces to the puzzle. And in order to put those pieces together, you need to know the big picture of the Bible and understand that that big picture of the Bible is what we call the biblical meta-narrative. 
So if you can understand the biblical meta narrative and how all of these little pieces come together, then as you read scripture, it will make a lot more sense because now you understand the big picture or the largest context, if you will, of scripture and how this one little verse that you're reading fits into that context. And so uh, I, that's where I start our students is understanding that there is a biblical context in which every single verse in the Bible fits and you have to begin to understand how they uh, intersect with one another. And so that would be the one thing I would share with people. But wouldn't you agree that every single book in the Bible can be held to that same level? There is a main thought to every single book. There is a Absolutely. main overarching theme. And so scriptures, stories, the narrative stories, the letters of Paul, the, you know, the, the, the gospels, they fit together. And, and until you really begin to understand how to work through those scriptures and see how they fit together, it can be a really difficult book to get through until you begin to see how those parts and pieces fit together. Am I on the right track there? No, you're, you're absolutely right. And so what we teach students is to understand that the smallest context is a verse, but that verse is connected to a paragraph. That paragraph, if it's multiple paragraphs, connected to a segment. That's what we call two or more paragraphs connected together. That segment to a chapter, that chapter to a book, that book to a testament, how many of them? two, old and new, and then, of course, the entirety of the Bible. So you're absolutely right. Each one of those books of the Bible, you know, uh, start out with a, with, a, with a verse, but then they move through what I just described as the biblical context. Would you consider it then? I'm, I'm going a little off script here, but let me ask the question. Would you consider it dangerous to take, which, which typically happens over and over again, it seems to me a dangerous thing to take a verse out of its context. Oh, absolutely. Which then drives I, the reason for Bible study to be so important because you got to be able to see that verse within the context, correct? You know, uh, I've read some authors where they say to do that, uh, a, uh, a, a context with a, a text without a context is just a con. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, so you, you need you 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 need the text needs the context, okay? And so you know we have to remember uh, that, and I teach students all the time that you will basically learn how to interpret scripture by way of context more than any other technique that I'm going to show you, you know, because it's the context that helps you understand whatever that particular verse or passage is. It would be no different if you, and I think you'd agree with this, it'd be no different than if you received a letter from somebody and you took one sentence out of that letter and placed it over here and tried to interpret what they were trying to say by that one sentence without the context of the whole letter. Well, yeah, it, it can, it can, that, what you just described has caused a lot of heartache and a lot of conflict because people have done that in real life because they didn't understand the context behind it. And so, uh, again, context becomes very important and it helps you to uh, interpret passages of scripture. So is this a class specifically for pastors? This is a class for uh, pastors, for uh, lay leaders, uh, for um, a believer. If you are a Christian, and in fact, if you're not, you're not a, uh, if you're not a Christian, you need to know how to study the Bible because, you know, of course, many people get saved just by reading the Bible. I think our, our <laughs> president right. got saved reading the Bible. So, you know, again, this is one of those what I would call core courses that for sure, not just a pastor, but every believer uh, should uh, be able to uh, in, enter into this class, take this class and embrace the concepts therein. So let me let me put a twist on that question. If I'm a pastor in a church and I've never been trained in Bible study methods, I can take this course, part of our basic ministry course, I can take this course, learn how to study the Bible. Can I utilize what you teach me in this course to teach my congregation how to study the Bible? I would say yes, but I would even go one step further and I'd say if you're a pastor and you want to take this course, invite your congregation to take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> then you got to study together. Well, I, I see this happen all the time. You know, it, 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 you know, some pastors are not afraid to let their congregation know that there's certain things that they don't know. And so what they do is they enroll in a class along with their congregants and they grow with this information together. together. When they go back to the church, they're able to chit chat about it. They have the same uh, vernacular, if you will, and now they can talk intelligently back and forth. And so I would say, certainly the pastor can take the class and go back and share it, but I'd ask them to take one step further and invite their congregants to take it with them. Great, great call for that. Um, great encouragement for that. Would you consider learning how to study the Bible to be transformative to your life? Without question. It's uh, the word of God, as Peter would say, it's the sincere milk of the word that grows us, that allows us to become mature. And so uh, for sure, if you want to be uh, transformed, then you need to understand and be able to study uh, God's word and 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 apply it. That's the main thing is not just to know what's in the text because we we teach uh, Bible study methods not just to fill your head up with facts and information, but we teach it so that not only will it change your life, but you will apply those scriptures to your life. And as Dr. Anderson would say, you would live an exchanged life, meaning you would exchange your life for the life of Christ. And so you take on the attitudes and the actions of Jesus and live a thank you life and not a have to life. Romans 12, one says, be transformed by the renewing of That's your right. mind. Absolutely. Bible study methods is a way yes. to be able to renew your mind. And therefore, Paul, 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 be therefore, absolutely. And remember, Paul says a lot of things occur because of the warring of your mind. And yeah. so, again, if we can put the right things in our mind, it's the old uh, computer phrase, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Well, if we can put good things in, then we'll have good things that come out as well. And so, again, um, Bible study is designed to transform your life because you're going to not only uh, be a hearer of the word, but as Paul, as uh, James would say, a doer of the word a doer. also. My guest has been Dr. Mark Haywood. He is the teacher in our basic ministry certificate course at Grace Center for Spiritual Development. He is the teacher of Bible study methods, basics of Bible study. He's also the Bible study teacher at Grace School of Theology. You've just had an opportunity to hear the importance of Bible study from the guy who teaches it, and you'll get a chance to take that course if you take our basic ministry course. Dean, thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for sharing the passion in your heart about this. I really appreciate you spending time with us, my friend. Thank you for having me, Mark. God bless for, you. For those of you that have joined us, we want to invite you to take part in our basic ministry course. You'll get all six modules, Bible study, disciple making, the doctrine of grace, systematic theology, basics of biblical counseling and the basics of stewarding ministry all wrapped up in that 18 hours of training that's going to be made available to you through both of our grace on both our grace on demand online platform as well as we teach it live so we want to be able to offer that to you you're going to get a chance to hear more from dr haywood and if you come to be a part of grace school of theology you'll hear even more from dr haywood so i want to thank you again for joining us Dean, thank you for being with us. I want to thank you and say thank you all for being here and tell you we'll see you again next time.